Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to episode three of Lavender Cottage Fiber Arts podcast. If you are clicking on one of our videos for the first time, welcome. And if you are coming back to check out our latest episode, welcome back. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're recording this podcast on, and that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. And we'd also like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who are watching this video today. Um, so my name's Anna and this is Pia and we're twin sisters from Melbourne and this is our podcast where we talk about anything to do with fibre arts, which is mostly mostly knitting and knitting crochet, crochet yeah. yep, but <clears throat> a few other bits and pieces um, thrown in. So I think we can probably just jump straight in, can't mm -hmm. we? Yep, yep, yep. Um, so the first section of our podcast is called Hot Off The Hook. Um, or hot off the needles um, but for today um, I only have one finished object and it's actually hot off the hoop because it is an embroidery um, project so hopefully that um, focuses there um, so this is the um, Claude Monet Japanese bridge embroidery that um, I showed in, in one of our pre previous episodes that I was working on sorry that was um, just one of the dogs kind of sneezed if you heard a noise then um, <laughs> bless you sandy <laughs> um so this is just uh yeah the finished the finished um version of of that one that i showed in the previous previous episode so i've been working on this quite a, a bit um in the past couple of weeks because we're in the southern hemisphere um in australia it's summer and it's actually we've had some days where it's actually been really really hot um so on some of those really hot days where it's not so pleasant to have a you know big blanket or whatever over your lap that you're working on for knitting or, or crochet or something like that um working on something like one of these small hoops um is a good good thing to do especially on something like to yesterday was i think it got up to about 38 which i think in fahrenheit is around about 100 degrees so it's like very hot um, so yeah, one of those days where you kind of just want to sit on the couch underneath the air conditioning and, and, and not do much else. So that's a good uh, thing to work on on those. So yeah, I was really happy with it turned how it turned out. And I think this, this style of pattern, like I would highly recommend to anyone who hasn't done embroidery before, or maybe if you've only done like a little bit, you know, as a kid or something like that. Um, cause it's basically all just. I think is it long stitch or satin stitch like just a, a simple stitch um and the like complexity of how the pattern turns out is all to do with how you layer the different colored threads um and in the pdf tutorial um which i'll link in the um, description below to the etsy store was from a seller called blooming day things um so she gives you like a chart of all the different colors to use um i use the dmc threads but she has the numbers um, for a few different other brands of threads as well depending on what brand of thread you have access to where you live um, so she tells you like which colors because they're all like coded with numbers to use for each um, section and like you know say start with dark green you know whatever number to to do the kind of background bit and then add in some like um, lighter stitches in this color etc um, so it's very easy to follow and I think yeah, you can get like a quite a impressive result um, without having to learn a lot of complicated stitches. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, I think it's quite nice, and I think that this um, the style of painting, the impressionism painting, mm. I think lends itself quite well to sort of being having an embroidery interpretation I guess is how I would phrase that yeah yeah because I guess that style of painting like you can kind of see each brush and it's stroke. like many 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 brush strokes yeah, yeah. and so yeah. in with the embroidery version I guess each stitch kind of is the equivalent of like a brush stroke yeah it's turned out quite well and that was that's the first sort of ma major embroidery project you've ever done isn't it yeah yeah so I guess yeah so i think that's excellent yeah so now that it's done i mean i just have to um like fold in the back um i think in the tutorial she recommends to use just like a hot glue gun to kind of fold in the back because obviously like the back looks kind of ugly um but i will um i think i'll just display it like kind of as it is like on the hoop just sort of like hanging as a, a hanging a wall um that's nice some yeah. wall art mm. gotta find a spot for it but yeah 
Cool. Um, so I just have two FOs to talk about. One is I'm actually wearing it. Um, so in the last episode, I think I showed that I was working on this top. It's called the Eden Crop Top um, and the pattern designer is Carrie Chambers. It's a crochet pattern. Um, and yeah, I finished this. I actually did finish it on New Year's Eve. I was trying to really trying to squeeze one more <laughs> <laughs> project out for the year. So yes, I finished it on New Year's Eve. Um, the yarn that I used is just a DK weight 100% uh, cotton that I got from Spotlight called Abbey Road Freedom Cotton and the colorway that I use is called Freckles. Um, I think that Spotlight has it's like a rebrand I guess um, of Premier Yarns hipster cotton because it is actually the same like if you compare the color colorways that are available from this Abbey Road and then the hipster cotton they're identical for the most part I think there's just a few that the Premier Yarns one has that Spotlight don't have so if you weren't in Australia um, this yarn is still available outside of Australia just under a different name mm -hmm. um, but so yeah it was a pretty easy project um, to do I did have to make a couple of modifications so I'll just quickly um, mention what they were um, so I sort of touched on this in the last video this pattern it's kind of size inclusive but kind of not so there's only three sizes in the written pattern but then it does also give you instructions of how to um, adjust the pattern to fit whatever size you are uh, like just sort of like a formula basically so the largest size the foundation chain was 110 stitches and I had to do 170 um, I'm about an Australian size 14 so I imagine that the 110 stitch foundation chain would maybe be for someone who's about a size 10 mm. so in that in I mean in that Which, way uh, that's about a size 6 in US size I think so yeah I think yeah. US sizes are usually 2s you sub 2 down you, you from, subtract kind of 4 to get the same yeah color. from yeah. Australian sizes so that I mean that's really not size inclusive um, and then so apart from the longer foundation chain I also made the body um, a fair bit longer so she did 16 rows for the body and I did 45 so it it's still mm -hmm. like a short top but it's not a crop top so it comes down to basically my natural waistline more or less that if I'm wearing high-waisted pants it kind of comes up to there um, and then so the other modification I had to do I kind of didn't really think about this but then when I started doing the bust I realized that I was going to have to do something so to do the bust you essentially just uh, create four triangles and obviously each triangle the width of the base of the triangle is a quarter of, of the top a quarter of the circumference and so I guess because I had a bigger circumference because I had a longer uh, foundation chain obviously the triangles that I was starting with was with a much wider base and so um, with the way that she writes the pattern um, on one row you decrease um, on either side just one sort of um, one decrease on either side and then on the way back you just do all single crochet no decreases so a decrease row no decrease decrease no decrease etc um, and I realized that because I had a much like wider base triangle if I just decreased at the same rate that she did um, they were going to end sort of up here um, rather than kind of about here Mm. Um, so I just decided to see I kind of was like I'll just try something hopefully it works if it doesn't I might have to try a few different um, I guess like rates of decreasing um, but so what I did was just do a decrease every single row instead of every second row and for me that worked out um, but I'm not too sure if you know how that would work for other people so I guess in some ways I, I was actually watching a, like a podcast this morning about like size inclusivity in mm. Um, like it was in about knitting but I guess it also applies to crochet as well that sometimes you know even if a pattern it's not just as simple as scaling everything by the same amount because obviously yeah, people have different bus sizes yeah or... and it's not like people if you are a larger person it's not like everything is larger in exactly the same proportions Proportion, like yeah. it, you know it's not as if a sphere that's just expanding or something yeah. like that yeah, yeah um so you might have to make the garment wider but if you're like not yeah if you're taller for example and i guess if your like waist circumference or whatever is you know two times whatever their standard size is or whatever but your neck is not going to be like two times yeah exactly for, so for like i a, think a neckline yeah or, often when people say that they release patterns um, for <clears throat> larger sizes you'll see that when people actually do knit those patterns they look terrible yeah and like you say I think one of the main things you see is like really gaping necklines um, and things like that so 
Yeah, I guess like, and sort of this this podcast I was watching is from the corner of craft. She was sort of making a, I guess like a call to action to people to really only purchase patterns from people who truly are um, making size inclusive patterns. So I guess, um, yeah, I must admit I hadn't really thought too much about mm. it. Um, and I think yeah, it will be something that is definitely on my mind um, going forward. Um, so yeah, that was my first finished object. And then my second, uh, finished object is actually a sewing, uh, project, but it's, I guess it's still related to knitting and crochet cause it's a project bag. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am sewing is still a fiber. Yeah, I guess it's, it? yeah, I guess so it's still using cloth. Yeah, I guess it's still fiber arts. Um, so it's just like a very simple, um, like a bucket bag with a drawstring. Um, the pattern is from a shop on Etsy from, I think she's from South Korea, uh, called pattern sewing shop um, which will obviously um, we put links to everything that we talk about in the description box so if you didn't catch the name of something um, that's where you can find it um, and I just use this cute little fabric um, with these little wombats um, <laughs> What is it on top of the wombat? It's like a rabbit or something. Well, yeah, I thought that was a bit <laughs> weird. I like to think for myself that it's a bilby, but oh, yeah. um, I think on the – now that I, I – I think when I looked at the receipt, it did say with rabbit, which if you're from Australia, you would find that super bizarre because rabbits are actually like an uh, introduced species that like damages – the ecosystem so i don't think um, they're like a considered a pest they're not really a, a friend to the wombat no. um, <laughs> um and then for the lining i use the same um one as what i did for the handles um this fabric i also got from spotlight but probably like five or six years ago so i would have no idea where it's from i kind of wanted to do that contrast fabric for the drawstrings as well but i just didn't have enough um mm. and it's just got one internal pocket as well so yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. It's probably a bit big to use for socks and it's kind of a bit small for a sweater, but um, it's a good size for like a, a sort of like an intermediate size project. So yeah, I was pretty, pretty happy with how it turned out. And I've done that contrasting fabric on the bottom as well. Just, I don't oh, know, yeah, for a bit of... Nice bit of interest the colors like compliments like that it's yeah got kind of like the yellow yeah and well greens. i felt that and they kind of look like the same shape as, as these the little, little leaves. leaves like you probably can't see from here but i'll put a close up photo mm. um maybe on the side just to see so yeah i was pretty happy with how it turned out um and again i felt like this is a not, not too bad of a project for um someone who's a sort of beginner sewer like i am because there's no zips um it does use bias binding to sort of cover up the internal seams which I hadn't used before um, but it wasn't too difficult and that one the written pattern the instructions aren't the best um, but um, she also includes a video tutorial with the pattern which was quite easy to follow so I think that one's a very beginner friendly pattern as well so I think yeah hopefully I can crank out a few more of these I think this took me about four hours to make in total so yeah and I suppose yeah. like now that you've done it I'll probably be a bit quicker, be a bit quicker uh, the yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you're going to make a couple at the same time. Yeah, like cut out all the fabric at once. A bit of a production and, line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, overall pretty happy with how it turned out and happy to have something to keep a project in that's not like just some freebie tote bag from yeah. a conference or something like that that I've been using so far. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, I guess, all for our finished objects. Um, for our Project Yarnathon, which is where we're each trying to knit or crochet a marathon's worth of yarn, I guess because we've only got one, well, I only finished one thing and you didn't finish any um, knitting or crochet. No. Yeah, so just to quickly update. So a marathon is 42,195 kilometers. Since our last video, all I finished is this, which is an extra 622 meters. So I'm up to 5,918 meters, which is 14% of a marathon. So that's where I'm up to um, with that. But yeah, I think that's about it for things that we've finished. So I guess now it's time for... Uh, to jump into our work in progress. Yep, yep. Things that we're working on at the moment. All right, so now it's time to have a look at um, some things that we've been working on um, at the moment. So this uh, segment is called Whip It Good um, for whip or work in progress. Um, so I've got three whips. Um, so the first one that I will show is a new whip that I've started um, since our mm. last episode, um, which is the embroidery version of Starry Nights by Van Gogh. Um, so this is from the same... Uh, Etsy shop as the um, the Monet pattern that I showed in the previous section. So when I finished the 
um, one A one. I made a start on this one, mm. and yeah, it's been quite fun. Um, at the moment, I'm up to the stage of doing sort of like the blues for the kind of this swirly sort of like cloud and the sky. Um, and again, I think it's, uh, I guess, similar sort of that impression style of painting that I think um, lends itself quite well to to being represented in an embroidery format. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And, and we've had some fairly hot days recently. So there's been a couple of days where it's been nice to work on um work on some embroidery instead like of smaller yeah and working on like a smaller project rather than having a big heavy blanket kind of draped across your lap um mm. while you while you're working on on some of those really hot days so yeah. i really like this part here like i feel like just like the way the stitches go like yeah it just gives it like a really nice sense of movement i guess like the, yeah it's sort of the direction of the stitches a bit more like it comes to life quite well yeah follows like the direction of the cloud yeah and like even like the halo around the moon and stuff like that it looks yeah I'm, i think this is really nice and i guess like it's a instantly recognizable yeah i suppose um, this is probably one of van gogh's most famous paintings and yeah I think, so it's a good one to yeah that people will instantly be able to tell um what it's meant to be but i feel like with these you could also give it a bit of your own flair if you wanted to as well like you could try and do like an exact representation or yeah. you could kind of mix things up a little bit as well like mm. i don't know you could even do like monet's garden but in a different season or something i don't i don't know yeah like i think if you wanted to give it your own twist you could do that as well yeah yeah um and then my other two whips are both knitting projects um, so this is the um, wavy um, rainbow ripple, I'm calling it, blanket. So I'm knitting this using the rainbow 8 slash 4 um, cotton from Hobby. Um, That's just their fingering weight, isn't it? Because I think yes. 8 slash 8 is their DK weight. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a fingering weight cotton. Um, so it'll be nice and light, I guess. Could be a good summer blanket kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and so I kind of started this to use up some of the leftover yarn that I had from the zigzag baby blanket that I knitted for our um, niece slash nephew who is uh, should be arriving any day now potentially will have arrived by the time we upload this video um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> um, but then ironically I used up like for this um, for this blue uh, sort of dark blue purple color and I think this blue uh, this this blue I didn't use in the zigzag one, but um, for quite a few of the colors that I use in the zigzag one, um, I actually have used up all that I had left over and had to buy more. So um, I'm probably going to have even more left over when I get to the end of this, which I guess is sometimes what happens. That Yeah, you think, oh, I'll just do this one project to use up this leftover yarn that I've got lying around and then... I feel like you, people out. do that with cooking as well. You're like, oh, I've got this small amount of whatever ingredient. Yep. I'll make another dish to use it up and then you have to buy more ingredients. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's but nice yeah. though. It's very fun, like just very... Yeah, I like sort the sort of, of like, like bright kind of colours. Joyful. And like the ripple, I think, just gives it a, that little bit of extra something. Yeah. Rather than just plain stripes, yeah. And so I'm planning to go up to three repeats of the rainbow. So I think I'm about, I'm actually about halfway, I think, because I've got about another half of this rainbow and then another full one. So I'm about halfway. Nice. Halfway through that one. And then my other knitting whip is the Happy Valley Baby Afghan, which is um, from Lion Brand. Yarn. It's just a free pattern on their website using their ice cream yarn, which is this acrylic um, baby yarn that comes in um yeah a bunch of different colors i just um picked out this ones that are sort of pastel and white um and so yeah it's, just, it's a, like a mitre square construction so you knit each square separately um and i'm uh just over two thirds of the way through so i've got another four rows to go and then i think I'll, that will be kind of finished and then four and a half days or four <laughs> days of sewing in and all the ends. Or are you just going to put a backing on this? Um, I kind of, I haven't like, fully decided yet if to I be wanted honest, to put like yeah. a fleece backing on or something I that I don't have to sew in no all the ends. No judgment. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess the other thing that I haven't really decided yet is like in the pattern, 
Um, they have like the bottom edge is sort of like the zigzag edge, but along oh, the you side you need a triangle to fill in the sides. So mm. I guess then it just kind of gives it a bit of a direction that you can tell like this is the side and this this is the top and bottom. Oh, okay. So I haven't I that fully decided really matter, like... what I'm going to do. I think yeah. the main thing I wasn't sure of is whether I would actually have enough yarn to do the triangle. So that's why I decided yes. to leave them till the end in case I was running short of yarn. Oh, that's a good idea. That I um that I didn't want to like be one square short or whatever to actually finish the blanket yeah but um so i finished the purple color now because i've done three rows of purple and i've still got about 25 grams of yarn left over so i've got plenty left over so i think i will be able to do the triangle so i might do that um just if it makes it a bit more neater kind of looking mm. and then maybe that would make it easier if you do want to put a backing on a backing it. on yeah to have like a straight edge to sew down yeah to sew down the sides of it but yeah i think i kind of i guess i don't know if it looks a bit if it's gonna look strange that it's gonna be sort of like wider than it is tall but i guess you could also just have it yeah i don't see why you in that kind of that orientation way. um but i think just because of the way this pattern works like it wouldn't work to do four repeats of the of the colors because then i would be finishing on this square instead of finishing on like it would be finishing on this row because this is like the even numbered oh yep 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 so i need to finish on an odd number of repetitions yeah um, so that it's because like this is number one yeah yeah i get you yeah yeah so then i would have to do instead of doing four like well so instead of doing three repeats of the colorway I would have to do five, which would be. Yeah, you'll, like, ru you'll run out of yarn. I'll run out of yarn, but I think also it will just be far too big. Like it would end up being more than double mm -mm. this length. Because mm -mm. I've done what? Th oh, would it be double? I don't know. But anyways, I think when I like kind of worked it out, I, I drew it up on like this graph paper. Um, and yeah, I think if I went out to five, I would run out of yarn and I'd have to buy more, but also it would just be like insanely big and, and not really, um, I don't know, it would just be a, a bit odd size. I think like it would be too small for sort of like a bedspread, but too big for like a baby blanket. So yeah, I suppose if you're planning to use it as like a floor mat as well, you don't want it to be too big. Otherwise it kind of restricts where it could be used. Like yeah. you would need a really big empty space on the floor to be able to lay it down kind of thing yeah oh. so yeah i'm like basically two-thirds of the way through that cool so is that that's all your whips at the moment yes yeah okay so i just have two things to show one is actually i guess kind of a hoe kind of a finished object um wait kind of a what hoe a half finished object oh Sorry. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Um, so I think I did show last in the last video that I had just started knitting the cuff of a pair of socks. And I've actually finished the two socks. Um, but why I am not considering them a finished object is because they're actually different sizes. And I did that on purpose. So I, based on like the, the circumference of the ball of my foot, I was closer to the 56 stitch cast on than the 64 stitch cast on. Um, and this is, sorry, I should have said that from the start. This is the vanilla sock, um, pattern from crazy sock lady. Um, and so I just felt like for because this is my first time knitting socks, I wanted to choose a cast on that I would have an even number of stitches on each DPN. Um, I felt like if I had an odd number, it would just get a bit confusing because I know you can do like a 60 stitch cast on as well, um, but that would leave me with 15 stitches on each DPN. So I kind of wanted to try either 56 or 64. Um, my measurements was leaning me to more towards the 56, which is the one I did first. And I just felt it's a bit tight, um, but so I, my plan was to knit one in the 56, one in the 64, wear them just like around the house, but in some shoes as well um, for a day or so, and then choose which size I think fits me better and more comfortably, and then rip out the other sock and redo it. Um, so yeah, which I haven't actually done that yet. I think the 64 is going to be too big because I think with the 64, I basically have no negative ease at all. Um, 
So, and then if the sock stretches out a little bit, which it will, as I wear it, it's just going to slip down and, and not want to stay up. So I'm not sure, like if maybe with the little bit of stretch, then the 56 will have a good amount of um, negative ease that it keeps it on um, nice and comfortable. Or if I really should just be looking at a pattern that has a 60 stitch cast on as well. I'm not too sure, but I guess, I think what a lot of people say is like your first couple of socks, um, you know, it might take you a little while before mm. you get something that, you know, fits you really well and you're really comfortable with. Um, but I really did enjoy um, knitting these, actually. I, um, yeah, finished them just a little bit before Christmas, but I'm not considering that a finished object because it's really not um, functional yet. It's two um, different odd size pair, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the <clears> yarn <throat> is just from... Um, an Etsy shop called Ruffles Crochet Crafts and it was just from I bought like a mystery bag that she had and in the mystery bag one of the things you got was just like a full skein of sock yarn so I don't know the name I don't think it has the colorway I don't think it has a name but that's where I got it from and yeah the pattern is um, crazy sock lady um, vanilla sock the other thing that I was thinking um, but I don't know I just don't have it in me to knit the same thing like over and over and over again um, is I could also try the 64 stitch cast on but with a smaller needle so I think I used a 2.5 yeah so this is a US one and a half so I guess I could also try a 2.25 um, millimeter and see if that gets me um, a better fit but yeah if anyone has any suggestions or um, you know has any other sort of experience about when they were first starting to knit socks like how how long it took them to get a, a really comfortable fit and and you know what did you try what what worked and what didn't work i would be more than happy to hear any um like yeah experience or, or tips that anyone has um but yeah so that's kind of like i guess it's kind of on the back burner until there's a day that's cool enough for me to walk around in, in, in woolen socks but yeah i wasn't game definitely not yesterday for example when it was like 40 38 degrees isn't that what you said 38 degrees or something yeah um all right so then my other whip is a new one i started this um sometime in the first week of january i did i think i showed the yarn in my dream weaving section of our previous podcast um, but I didn't show the actual, um, yeah, I guess, well, the project didn't exist. So that's why I didn't show it. Um, so at the moment it doesn't look like too much, but, um, this is going to be, um, just like a t-shirt. It's called the So Summer Shirt from Jessie Made Designs. Um, and it's just a fairly simple, it's knit from the bottom up. Um, so far I've knit, uh, I've just split for the front and back, um, uh, I think yesterday or the day before um, and I finished doing the increases on the front so now I've just got a knit for another I think I can't remember if it's like eight centimeters or something like that another couple of inches um, and then start neckline line shaping and then I'll move on to the the back um, and I opted for there's three different options for the hem you can just do like a rolled hem a ribbed hem or a folded hem and I opted for the folded hem um, so that was, I guess, I don't know, I feel like this year I am trying to, uh, I would like to, with every project that I do, like learn a new technique, technique or something yeah. like that um, and keep track of all the new techniques that I learned. So this is the first time I've ever used a provisional cast on. And the way I did it was just to um, do crochet uh, a foundation chain and then knit into the chain. I watched a few videos on different methods for provisional cast on and that was the one that to me seemed to be the easiest to kind of follow what to do so um, that's what I did and I think it turned out pretty well with the folded hem um, and the yarn that I'm using for this is um, this um, it's like a very light pink uh, base with all different colored sort of uh, rainbow multicolored um, speckles um, and it's from uh, an Australian yarn dyer called Skip Rope Yarn Co and the colorway is called Heart Eyes and the base is called their So Twist, So Twisted um, uh, sock, sock Yarn, which is a fingering weight yarn, but it's a two ply. So it's like a high twist um, sock yarn. So, and I might, I think I'm actually gonna run out. Uh, I was trying to calculate, cause I've only got two skeins of it. I was trying to do all these calculations of, cause I did want to make it just slightly longer than the pattern. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to calculate 
how long could I make it with the yarn that I have but I wasn't 100% confident in my calculation so I decided I'll just make it the length that I want it to be and if I have to buy another skein of yarn then and so be it so be it because I think I prefer to have to buy another skein of yarn and then be happy with the final garment mm -hmm. than to kind of only use what I have and then not like the outcome and never wear it I think that would be more wasteful yeah. than buying another skein of yarn yep. so yeah that's my um, that's my other whip um, I've also got a, you know, a whole bunch of other things on the back burner but I haven't really made much progress on them so yeah I thought I will probably update on those ones in a future video mm -hmm. so yeah I guess that's basically it for our whips then isn't it mm -hmm. So now it's time for dream weaving and this is where we talk about any um, anything that we have purchased recently but also um, upcoming plans and stuff like that. Um, but I guess we kind of thought that being the first episode of the year we would um, just for this particular episode um, focus our dream weaving section on um, goals like just sort of overarching goals for the year and what we would like to kind of get I don't know if achieve kind is the of right like word new but year's yeah. Resolutions. yeah kind of but like <laughs> I don't really do new year's resolutions because I'm terrible just at sort keeping of like them, a <laughs> like a like a loose kind of uh, uh, yeah I mean these are all things that I'm like I would love to do these things this year but if I don't get if I don't do all of these things this year like I'm not going Can to do it next year yeah I'm not going to feel bad about it and and if there's something else that I prefer to do instead that comes up i'm not going to say oh but i put this you know thing on my goals list so i have to do that instead like it's really a no pressure thing but i guess it's just sometimes nice to have something to work towards yeah yeah so do you want to go first uh yeah okay so um, my um goals or knitting slash crochet new year resolutions are fairly uh straightforward um, so firstly, I have started, this is a little swatch thing that I'm just working on at the moment. I've started um, learning to crochet. Um, so I did have some lessons from <laughs> Anna, um, but also because I'm left-handed, um, I think sometimes it can be a little bit hard for me to uh, follow someone who's right-handed and just copy what they do, but, try, yeah, and, and, but I was, try and reverse it. I was trying to, like before when you were like, when you asked me to teach you, I did try at home to try and crochet something left hand and I oh, thought I won't just, be as good but I'll still definitely be able no, to do it it was impossible. impossible I just I felt like my brain and my hands were just like not communicating with each other yeah, yeah. so I did actually um, vaguely consider just learning to crochet right-handed because I think I guess being left-handed like you tend to be a bit more ambidextrous and for example um with um pottery or ceramics I actually throw or do like when I'm working on a pottery wheel like I actually do what like the same way as a right-handed person would because I think I kind of learned from a like right-handed teacher, teacher. Mm -hmm. and I guess like for that kind of thing maybe if you're learning it completely from scratch like it's all completely foreign to you so whether mm, you do it true. left or right probably doesn't matter too much although I guess with something like crochet because you kind of hold the hook like similar to how you would hold a pen I guess it does feel more mm, natural, natural to hold it in your dominant hand so I did watch a couple of um videos online as well um which i think most of the left-handed crochet videos they're online, just mirrored they're just they? yeah there's someone who's filmed like a tutorial like a normal right-handed tutorial and then they've just used whatever software video editing thing to just flip um mirror mirror the video so yeah i've been just this is just a little swatch of like just some single crochet out and I kind of stuffed it up a little bit there I don't know what I did but as I'm just practicing on this so that would be my kind of my goal for um crochet for this year will be to um become like confident in in crochet and so I feel like I can follow a pattern um and yeah I do I have you'll definitely you know. I do have a couple of um I do have a couple of uh, things I've bought, like um, kits or patterns for making. So I bought, um, I think I mentioned in one of our previous episodes, I bought a kit for an alpine stitch blanket. Um, so I've got that kind of sitting there, which is sort of like a jewel toned um, blanket in uh, cotton. So that, that um, I think will be quite nice and probably goes sort of with the kind of general decor vibe of my house as yeah, well. So like on this um, couch or something, yeah. So yeah, um, that would be something that would be nice to be able to, to work on. 
Um, and then my other goals, um, I would like to make at least one garment. So um, thus far, like all of my kind of fiber arts crafting has been just for sort of homeware decorative like blanket type things, which I guess are quite easy to do because you're kind of just knitting like a big gigantic rectangle and I guess or a like square. The gauge is not as critical, yeah. Yeah, that you're not trying to like make it fit to a certain size or anything like that. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I haven't got my heart set on whether my first garment has to be knitted or crocheted or um, anything like that, but just that I would like to make um, at least finish at least one garment project um, this year, which potentially will be um, I bought some, I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I bought some of this um, Sierra, which is like an eight wire double knit um, weight. I've got two different colorways. Um, that um, I think would be quite nice for sort of like a jumper or sweater um, type project for winter so um, maybe using one of these um, so yeah if you have any ideas for like a um, kind of beginner level um, sweater jumper cardigan type thing using um, DK weight yarn feel free to let me know and then my final goal <laughs> Is, this is actually more specific. Um, so I think this year I would like to finish my Hue Shift Afghan, which I started last year. Um, I Like I always knew when I started that it was going to be sort of like a long-term project. Um, but I think, yeah, hopefully would be something that is achievable to finish within if I don't finish it within exactly one year but not going over more than three years because I feel like if it gets to that stage it's probably just never going to get finished mm. um so yeah that would be something that I'd like yeah. to do and, and I, I guess, guess it'll be you're pretty close to finishing those two blankets so once you've finished those two yeah like that will be kind of like the next oh I've I have done um I think 15 squares out of 100 for the Hue Shift Afghan. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's all the border to do as well. Um, but yeah, I think like once I've, I guess the Happy Valley Baby Afghan was planned to be a gift um, for our um, niece slash nephew. Um, so that was kind of like, I guess, a bit more of a priority, priority to work on that. Um, but yeah, so once that's finished, I'll have a bit more knitting time to dedicate towards the the Hue Shift Afghan. I think also the Happy Valley Baby Afghan. I mean, uh, probably everyone has kind of projects like this that they just get a bit addicted to working on because it's kind of quite satisfying because the, the mitre squares on the Happy Valley one are, are quite a bit smaller. So they knit up quite quickly within sort of like half an hour. So if you don't have a lot of time and you can just go, oh, I'll just knit one square kind of thing. If, you know, you're watching TV, oh, I can knit one square within this episode or whatever. Whereas with the Hue Shift Afghan, they take a bit longer. So, um, I suppose I the problem. That's why I kind of gravitated the, towards working on I it. I guess the problem with blankets is they're not that portable. Like it's not very travel friendly. Like you can't really knit that no. on, on the train or something. No, no, and be sort yeah. of like mm, you know, <laughs> drape your blanket over elbowing the person, the next, person to you. next to you. They probably wouldn't yeah. really appreciate that, or maybe yeah. they would appreciate it. Maybe <laughs> they'd be like, "This is a lovely blanket." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess it would probably also just get like a bit dirty as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so I have a list of goals as well. I've started, I started the end of last year in December. I started this sort of like knitting notebook and I still have to put pictures in it, but I've just basically for every project, I'm just putting like when I started it, when I finished it and I only put it in when I finish it. I don't know if that's a good way to do it or not. The yarn I used, how much I used and any notes. And then I just stick a few little samples of the yarn and my plan is next to that to stick a photo. Um, and then I just have like a monthly summary, but so at the start of the year so starting for 2023 I just made a page with some goals so um and I have a lot so yeah that's why I um kind of yeah I'm not um super fussed if I don't meet all of them and also I guess some of these goals I could like knock off several goals with one project um oh, so okay. yeah it's not necessarily so um I'll just kind of read them out I guess so I have a goal to knit one garment so I've you know made a significant way towards doing that already would you consider a sock to be a garment or is that no i don't think so i think something to wear on your body i oh, think is the definition i just wasn't sure what yeah to... i'm not sure i think for my purposes i would say no okay yep uh so knit one garment crochet one garment make something with cables because that's i don't know how to do cables so i'd like to learn how to do cables oh yeah so i guess that would probably be like 
usually cables would be for a garment so. exactly so that's yeah what i mean that some some of these things one oh, project like one project could satisfy multiple um goals uh make some stripy socks with an afterthought heel i just thought um with this sock knitting because i obviously just did the heel flap and gusset that's in the vanilla sock pattern i would also like to try a few different heel styles just to see if there's um one that fits me more comfortably um than that um i would like to learn how to do tunisian crochet oh um, yeah i've seen videos of that it looks quite cool yeah so i think tony lipsy who's tl yarn craft she has a lot of really good videos about um tunisian crochet and she's got a couple of nice um patterns to try um so that is another one um and then so uh, the next three goals are related to specific designers that i would like to make um one thing from each of these designers so i would like to knit um one pattern from andrea maori of drea renee knits i would like to knit something from stephen west um these goals are like really lofty by is the way some, like, is this andrea lady is is she the one who made that night shift Yes. Pattern? Oh, yeah. I think I have that on my Ravelry favorites as well. Yeah, I've got heaps of her patterns in my Ravelry favorites. Um, and then I'd also like to crochet a, a Janie Crow pattern. Um, she is the designer who made the Persian tiles blanket. I think Magic Lanterns is hers as well. She's got really, really beautiful. Um, and actually, that was one of the first um, sort of crochet accounts that I followed when I made my um, Instagram account. And I sort of forgot about it and, and I saw one of them in my feed the other day and I was like, oh, I remember like when I first started learning to crochet, these were some of the first things that I saw and thought, wow, I would really love to be able to make something like that one day. Yeah. Oh, so cool. yeah, I'd like to make something of hers. Um, and then uh, I would like to make at least two project bags. So I'm halfway to that goal mm. already. Um, and then my last goal is that I would and like make another one tonight. And I can make another one tonight. Mm, and maybe take off your goal. Maybe, or maybe. Not. I mean, it's, it's already what is it? Let's say the fourteenth. No, fifteenth of Jan. So yeah, fifteenth of Jan. So it's not like a resolution that you can tick off on the first day of the year. No. Um, and then my final goal is to use at least twenty kilometers of yarn hmm. through either knitting or crochet. So those are all of my goals. Um, I don't have any yeah specific. Um, patterns or anything in mind at this stage just the sort of very vague um, vague goals and yeah like I said I mean potentially I could tick off like knitting a garment knitting something with cables and knitting something from Andrea Maori or something like that that could be all ticked off although I think she more does color work than um, cables but just as an example um, that could be all ticked off in one project so um, yeah I guess we'll just see see how we go and yeah like i said if i i guess it's good that you also have like some of your goals is more like cumulative like the knit 20 kilometers of yarn type of thing yeah even if you do manage to finish all of your other items you still have something that you can keep working on yeah and i think i would just also like to just continue to because i guess yeah still being like very beginner at all of this expand on i guess maybe try and pick projects that um teach you something new like yeah you know maybe maybe at some point pick something with a bit of color work or yeah um brioche is something that i'd also like to learn how to do oh um, what about that entrelac knitting yeah yeah just like different techniques i think would be fun to sort of just keep keep learning so i think i want to be mindful to try and pick projects I mean, not not always. I mean, it's good sometimes to have something a bit mindless that you can just do while you're watching TV. But I also would like to, yeah, try and pick some projects that kind of, yeah, encourage me to learn um, a new technique or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess the mitre square for me is like a bit of a safe thing that I know how to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. But I need to, um, oops, bit of i mean i think there's with something like this there's nothing wrong with staying in your comfort zone but there's also nothing wrong with going outside of it either like yeah i suppose that's the thing with supposed to be enjoyable with, with yarn that you can always kind of rip it out and start again if yeah things, if things kind of go south yeah but it's just it's supposed to be for fun so if in that moment something fun for you is just doing something that you're comfortable with and is very easy i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah um but if you, in that moment, something fun for you is doing something that's really challenging, then that's that's fine as well. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's our dream weaving section for today. So 
I think that's about all we have, yeah, for this episode. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've got any suggestions for us about any of the things that we talked about, um, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, we'll try and put links um, to everything that we've mentioned sort of specifically by name and things like that in the description box. So if you wanted to check out any of the patterns or anything like that that we talked about, um, yeah, you can find that in the description box. And um, I think we mentioned last episode, we're aiming for monthly episodes um, with maybe a few shorts in between, but probably just once a month for the, the longer episode. Um, so yeah so this should be about mid-jan or well, I guess yeah. it's mid-jan today kind of but yeah yeah mid to late jan by the time we upload, upload this it, one yeah but um yeah thank you for joining us again um, this afternoon to hear about all of our uh, fiber arts and hopefully we will see you in our next episode um, and I guess until then um, yeah we wish you happy stitching happy stitching um, and yeah, until then you can keep up to date with us on i think we've got all of our links to yep. um instagram and that sort of thing where we'll put you know yep updates of our work in progress and that yep on yep. our instagram as well yep awesome okay bye